Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. On today's video, I'm going to show you some basics of doing some chipping technique on your 35th scale models. Uh, we'll be doing three different types. First one we'll start off with is using the hairspray technique, and then I'll also show you a few others using sponges and paintbrushes as well to get some really, really nice looking chips on your models. So let's get started on it. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about in the chipping process is the chipping coat that we're actually going to use on it. And rather than buy anything else, you can easily make it out of using a little Tamiya XF69 NATO Black and some SF68 NATO Brown. And it's just a mixture of the two. Usually about 40% of the black and 60% of the uh, brown color. And I'm just going to mix up uh, a little right here to show you. Give it just a touch more. And you want to get it into a color that looks like a kind of like a tarnished metal. The first technique I'm going to show you here is using women's hairspray. What I've done is I've taken some plastic sheeting, just regular white stuff, and we're going to spray it with a uh, fairly uniform coat of our chipping paint. And you want to make sure you get it all on there because a lot of this will come off and you don't have any white spots underneath. So if you were doing an armor piece, you would spray most of the area that you're going to do the chipping on. And I'll show you what we do next. Okay, this part right here has now been sprayed with the chip coat. Uh, lacquer sealed in with Tester's clear lacquer just in a spray can to seal it in. And then I've went and put two coats of women's hairspray on top of that and let that dry. Now we're going to go ahead and start putting our regular base color on. We're going to start off with XF60. Okay, I've masked off all the corners on this. Now this is one of been the pieces that has been sealed and then had a coat of hairspray and then a coat of the outer paint. The reason we did this is we're going to try to, dipping our paintbrush in water, we're going to try to get a rougher texture on this panel. So I'll put a little water on it to start loosening the paint. And then we can start working on the corner. And you can also use a pick and or a toothpick and you can put some longer scratches inside the the paint as well and like I said this is just a representation of what to expect on it so we're gonna peel the uh, masking tape off and then you can see we can start working on some of this area that wouldn't be scratched up as much takes a few seconds for the water to sink through into the hairspray. And you can see how look that looks really really nice if you want some mild scratches on it. And I'm also going to show you on the two-tone part of the paint how the scratches will start to show up. <clears throat> and just at any point, all of a sudden it'll start to just go. And that's when you want to start being careful with the uh, 
scrubbing action so you don't take too much off and end up with that. And if you're looking for that, that's what you need to do on it. But you can see how it just starts to just come off. Now, after this would be done, we would let it dry. And after it dries, we'll clear coat it with dull coat to completely seal in the work that we've done on it. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna show you is the olive drab. And I've just cut up, like I told you, the three by five, or excuse me, the plastic card, and just put a coat of uh, olive drab onto it. Then I've mixed a little, little thing of paint here. There's actually five drops of, to me, is XF62 the olive drab color that we painted the base right here and one drop of XF60 and you want to use yellow as a softener on olive drab because olive drab is made up of black and yellow if you use white you get kind of a, of a pea soup color that looks kind of funky looking that not always gonna work for you so I'm just gonna take a real fine brush and just start putting some chips on it And the more random you can be with it, the, the better it'll start, you know, looking more realistic. And kind of a bigger one right there to show you as well, too. And you can use that same paint. Okay, and once you have your lighter color on here, you take your, uh, your brownish chip color and just kind of start to fill in the middle of it. And you don't want to be perfect. Some of it's going to go right to the edge because the chip was bigger on that side. You can put a little bit on the, on the outer edge of that. And now, like I said, this came out a little bit too thick for 35th scale, but. can go over in this area as well and you can do some area and some chips next to it that don't even have the lighter green because they'll show up a little bit more now that you've highlighted it okay now we're gonna actually uh, use it on an actual real model here I've mixed up a little bit of our uh, fading color here and it's a mixture of about five to one like we had done on some of the others and we're just gonna lightly getting most of the paint out of the brush because we don't want to do too much on here. Let's just start putting some some marks around the edge right here. You can even do a little chip in the paint. And because the amount of paint we're using right here it dries pretty quickly, so we can go right ahead and start using our uh, chipping color. Just putting a little bit. And this chipping color, we've got a little bit more of the brown in it. Than, the, than more of the black like some of the other ones that we can use. But this way, because the brown will show up a little bit better against the olive drab color, because it is so dark. And that always is kind of tough to show off uh, things like that when you have such a dark paint on it. And you can put a few of the chips without the fading color, which hopefully you can see those, but um, they're subtle. They're, they're not gonna be as, as bright as when you put it on like a, a lighter vehicle. But when you start to look at it and you do, would do the entire vehicle, especially areas around the turret or areas around the front hull where guys would slide off or there would be dragging equipment off, we can go ahead and do things like all of that. And this area would show a lot. Always picture all around the edge of the turret, the guys get out pulling their equipment off. So hopefully you can see that pretty well and see how that, that chipping starts to work on that. 
Okay, and this is another way we can do some real minor, minor worn chipping using our little foam brush that we've kind of all ripped up and torn up. We'll dip it into our, uh, our paint and then kind of saturate it, but taking a paper towel, you want to blot off quite a bit of that color off of there. And then you can just start lightly, like around this edge right here, put that back down. start to look like rub marks in the paint. And then what you can do is after that's dried for a little while, which it doesn't take very long at all, you can take a little bit of your chipping color and using a similar type of brush I mean the foam again, knocking out most of the excess off of it. You want that too heavy. And then just lightly start just patting it just softly. And hopefully you can see it starts to give it a worn effect where it's a kind of tarnished metal coming through, but you see the varying degrees of paint. You got your dark green, your dark olive drab, the lighter faded color, and then the actual part that's almost gone all the way through to metal. And that of course will work up here along any of these areas too. And it's just all depending on how weathered you want to make the vehicle. I mean, if you want to go super crazy on it and really make it look like it's beat up, but uh, I think that gives it a nice little effect to it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make some just some basic scratch using that same paint. Uh, I've, I've made up two panels right here. One of them I've used the black and white coat underneath there, which you can kind of see the tone variations on it. So we'll start off on that one. And let's say you just wanted to make some chips around the edge of a panel. Just using your brush, you want to thin the paint down a little bit more than you would normally like for an airbrush. And then blot off some of the excess and using just a real fine tip brush start just tapping the edges and I'm trying to you know this is this is just for demonstrational purposes how you want to do it or how much you want to put on it is totally up to you and you can actually start making some uh, and these this will work just for the real small scratches to make some bigger scratches we'll show you another technique here as well and along a panel line or a weld line where a lot of the paint comes off, that'll work really, really well. You can even make some, you know, some longer scratches. And then once you dull coat that, it really blends it right into the, uh, the rest of the paint. Okay, now I'm going to show you using uh, a little bit of a sponge technique. And the sponges, this is the foam that comes packed for a lot of electronic devices, just a soft foam. You can, if it's if it's not too much open pores, you can kind of mess it up a little bit with your tweezers, just so it's a, more of a rough thing. Then you want to lightly kind of ball it up so it's a little easier to work with. Lightly get a little bit of paint on it, and then blot out quite a bit of it on a paper towel, so it's not too, too much. And this, this is going to take a little bit of getting the hang of it, but after a while, you'll figure it out. And just, you want to start off real, real lightly. Actually, I'm going to do it with my left hand. This is going to be a little bit harder. That way you can see it a little better. And you can see how the scratches start to form. And it takes a little bit of time, because if you put too much paint on it, you get smears that just don't look right. You can kind of start working more towards a corner. And then you can use it as a blending technique between what you've done over here. Dip a little bit of paint in that, blot it out, and kind of start working that those two together. So you get the two types of scratches, the little bit of the bigger ones, and then all the little smaller ones that would normally be forming as well. 
hold that up to the camera so you can see that a little bit better. And just imagine that on the corner of a tank, how that'll start to look. Okay, for the a little bit larger scratches that you want to make a paint variation of tone around the scratch itself, what you're going to do is, on this right here, we're using just the basic dark yellow sprayed onto a plastic card. We're going to use the same XF60 dark yellow, and we'll put about, about five or six good drops in there. And then what we want to do is you want to mix in a little bit of white in this to lighten it down. Now as you saw in the olive drab section you wanted to use yellow because that's the base that'll it'll turn that properly. So you, you're going to want a, a paint that's close to it but still different enough that when you paint it on you'll be able to notice it. Okay I've gone ahead and added a little bit of extra thinner into it and we'll start off around the edge of a panel and you want to just start just doing some variations of patterns and you want to use very little paint when you're doing it as well then we can also start to make some larger gouges in the paint and this just like I said you can just make them as random as you want and as it dries you'll notice that the paint will blend a little bit but it still sticks out and I'm making these like I said a little bit larger so they're a little bit more visible on camera just do some odd patterns there big long gouge on this one and then you can also do once you do the long gouges you can put some smaller uh, things like that now that's gonna dry really quick because the paint was really thin and you don't have it such a small amount it'll dry really fast so we'll use a little bit of our chipping color now give it a little splash more of uh, paint thinner in it blend that up and then you want to just go over lightly and start filling in these cracks. And needless to say, having a very fine paintbrush is a very, very big help in this. And just do it a random pattern. You can go over the edges up to the edge of it because all the gouges and scratches that you'll see on vehicles are all going to be varied completely and then like we did a little bit up here you can make those real light that up. Now this needs to dry a little bit more but you can start to see how a gouge and a scratch will look. And like I said these are a little bit larger maybe for 35th scale but just imagine them you know shrink them down a little bit and you'll see how great they look on a vehicle. And then of course you can always take your sponge after this is dried a little bit more blot out most of the paint and I can do it so you can see it better. Just put a few extra little gouges and scratches along it. I like the little ones because it has a tendency to look like blending everything in together because very rarely we will see just one big gouge. You'll usually see a, a vehicle that's pretty beat up. And you can see how that starts to add a little bit to it. It's just as if something's been dragged over constantly, constantly over paint and it starts to wear it off.
So I've kind of finished up this little panel right here to do a little bit more into what a scale would look would, would look like on a 35th scale vehicle. And, and like I said, how much you want to beat it up is completely up to you. It's your model. Just have fun with it. So I want to thank you very much for watching as always. And please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.